staying with us, it's time now to go to the newspapers and see what the headlines are saying on some of our national dailies. We're being joined this morning by Mr. Nick Agule, public affairs analyst, uh, joining us from the UK. Good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning to our viewers globally. Yeah. Okay, this morning we're starting with the business NG, and I'm going to your primary constitution, as it were, uh, the oil sector. NNPCL declares state of emergency on crude oil production. I'd like your comment on that. What does that mean, actually, and what will it do uh, to the production of crude? Uh, it means nothing. Absolutely nothing. The NNPC should stop coming to the press to be making statements. They should simply deliver on the mandate that they have. They have a mandate to run Nigeria's oil company business. A lot of people don't know that NNPC is a business. NNPC is a business just like Shell is a business, Mobile is a business, Total is a business. You never hear Shell or Mobile or Chevron come on news and be saying we have declared a state of emergency in our production, we have done the No, they are quietly producing crude oil and refining crude oil in some refineries around the world and delivering value to their shareholders. But the NAPC comes on air and be making these noises. Um, I, I'm surprised that journalists did not uh, ask him what has happened to his uh, Potaco refinery, where back in, uh, December, in December last year, uh, he went and uh, with fanfare and pomp and pageantry, uh, said the uh, mechanical completion uh, was done. And, and, and they, they staged a huge um, uh, ceremony, uh, and it, it is where in July now of the following year, and, and nothing has happened. That refinery has not brought out a single barrel of crude oil. You see, uh, we cannot continue doing the same thing and expecting different results. The NNPC, as a government-run business, has not delivered value to Nigerians, who are the shareholders, for a long time. And these are the areas that we had expected that President Tinubu was going to take decisive action upon. Because President Tinubu, as we say, is perhaps Nigeria's first private sector president who came from the private sector. He should understand what running a business is. You know, so we have this uh, humo uh, this humongous behemoth called the NNPC. Crude oil, they are not producing. Refined petrol in your four refineries, that is not happening. But they are surviving on a crude oil that is produced on behalf of Nigeria by the international oil companies. They take that crude oil, sell it, make money, pay themselves big salaries and bonuses, and it's only the balance that they put back in the federation account, something that shouldn't happen. So uh, for me, in, in summary, I am going to say NNPC should go and deliver value. We don't want to hear press conferences. If you cast your mind back, this is the way Knight uh, used to make press conferences in the past, and yet we didn't see telephones. And when that sector was taken into the private sector, we don't hear uh, MTN, Airtel, or Nine Mobile, or Globe come on air and be saying we are declaring a state of emergency in the telecom sector. No, no, no. Every day we work or we switch on our phone, our phone is working. They are quietly delivering value for their shareholders and for the customers. That's what the NPC need to do. We are tired of hearing these news conferences. Uh, well, you said that the, the president came from the private sector, and then you also said you cannot keep doing the same thing and expecting different results. Perhaps uh, now that we know that he is the minister of, uh, of petroleum, uh, because that is what it is, he is the minister just like Buhari was, maybe this is the new thing that he has brought to make sure that uh, production in that or, or the value that they are supposed to give to us is higher. So why would you say it is nothing? Because this is something different from what they have been doing. And there is absolutely nothing different. Uh, first and foremost, let us take, talk about the portfolio that you have mentioned. Uh, what is the big deal about the petroleum 
uh, ministerial portfolio that uh, successive presidents in Nigeria don't want to let it go into the hands of someone to run it and be focused on it. So that, that, that number one, is one thing that President Tinubu has not done differently. Why is he hijacking uh, the petroleum portfolio? He is a busy man already. And why will he therefore sit on top of the most, perhaps the most important portfolio in Nigeria's economy today? Uh, because I can tell you that there are a lot of files on his table waiting for his consideration as minister. But he is president, and he is, he is having to, he, well, I don't need to describe his day-to-day -day role, but he, we know he's busy. You know, so he should have not done that. He should have departed from that tradition by handing over this portfolio to a competent, well-qualified, and business-oriented Nigerian who has a pedigree in the oil industry to run this ministry and be coming to him for decision-making and signatures. So that's number one. Number two, President Tinubu has touched on every other important institution in Nigeria. The FIRS, he changed the leadership. The Customs, he changed the leadership. The Central Bank, he changed the leadership, and so on and so forth. But he left the leadership of the NNPC intact. How is that doing something differently? You know, the, the, the leadership of the NNPC that has not delivered value, that uh, frequently let Nigerians go and queue up at petrol stations with fuel scarcity, that has uh, hiked high, high the, the price of petrol from about 100 and something to 700 and some people buying a thousand naira, whose refineries are dead, and their upstream sector for the production of crude oil is doing nothing. And President Tinubu has left the leadership of the NNPC intact. How does that change anything? Changing the name from NNPC to NNPC uh, uh, L does not uh, mean anything. Okay, so these are the issues. Number one, first issue is the inefficiencies in the system. So uh, the NNPC as a business is being run inefficiently in the way government runs in Nigeria. And that needs to change. You know, that hasn't changed. And then funding. Nigerian government does not have the funding. The Nigerian government is borrowing to even pay salaries. So what President Tinubu needed to do was to let the NNPC into the private sector, either through outright privatization or commercialization or, or even uh, an incorporated joint venture to allow private sector funding to come into that company so that the company can do a lot of work. That has not happened. And, and then second, and then thirdly, we're talking about the little crew that is produced. It's stolen. As we speak today, there are people who have connected pipes and are still in Nigeria's school door. What has President Tinubu done about it? You know, so I can't see anything that the president is doing differently. And that's why I say he cannot be expecting different results. Okay. Uh, so um, let's go to another issue. The same um, newspaper, which is uh, Business NG, uh, we have... Uh, CBN to sanction banks rejecting old and lower dollar denominations. That's a headline there, and I don't know why it's, it's making the headlines anyway. Did you say old dollar? Yes, note? old and lower dollar denominations. Banks are rejecting them. Oh, well, yeah. The, 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 issue, the issuing body for the dollar is the Federal Reserve, which is the Central Bank of uh, the United States of America. Mm -hmm. And for so long as that uh, issuing body, uh, issuing authority, has not declared any of their currencies uh, as not being legal tender, then the banks have a responsibility to take them. There is absolutely no reason for them not to do that because uh, the banks have to join the CBN in the monetary policies that will help the value of the Naira in Nigeria. Uh, and if the CBN is encouraging people to bring their dollars into the banking system, then the banks are expected to join hands with the CBN and to make that happen. I can imagine the reason why the banks are rejecting those notes is because um, it, it, it costs them a lot of money to process it. You know, you have to employ somebody, put them on the counter, they count the notes, 
and then they safely uh, bank it, and then they self custody and all of that, and it's just a dollar bill. Yeah? And, 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 that's, and that, and that to, to them could be a pain. But they don't want to say that the banks in Nigeria, they are very shy of. They like to take our money, but they don't want to offer us any service. You go to banks today, all the ATMs, almost all the ATMs with banks today are, are no longer having cash inside because uh, they want us to go and pay money at POS before we, we get uh, Naira out. So instead of them to spend money to employ people to be putting notes in the ATMs and all of that, they don't want to do that. But uh, they keep debiting our accounts every month for no, no service provided. And that's why the banks are some of the most profitable entities in Nigeria. Even during the COVID time, they were making profit. Till today, they are making profit. So the CBN is a regulator. They are like a referee in the game of banking. They have a yellow card, they have a red card. They should use it. Because like if you look at uh, the current uh, euros that are going on, if a referee has a yellow card and a red card and the players know that he can never use it, then they are never going to obey him. They are never going to do well on the, on the field of play. So I think if the CBM should sanction some of those banks, uh, the message will be passed clearly that they have to do what they are expected to do instead of coming to give us uh, press conferences. Well, I, I thought that was going to even discourage people from using the dollar too much. I don't know because I don't understand these things as much as maybe I should. Uh, but we are, we are so worried about what is happening uh, to the currency of another nation that uh, it gives me concern. Uh, but um, some people have said that um, uh, the rising U.S. Uh, yields put pressure on the Nigerian Naira, but that is not the case I want to look at now. Insurgency is what I want to look at. The top left corner of that same uh, business NG, the ins insurgency sack all appointees in security sector, reps tell Tinubu. Will this be a solution to the problem we have in security? Before I answer your question on uh, security, uh, let me just say uh, that, uh, you know, based on your last uh, statement before we went to security, why are we so concerned? Why are we bothered about uh, the dollar? Uh, the reason is that we have boxed ourselves into a corner where the dollar now becomes like the king that we have to worship, that we have to uh, handle carefully. Because as we speak today, we need the dollar to buy petroleum products. Otherwise, there will be fuel scarcity. We need the dollar to buy food. We need the dollar to buy uh, pharmaceuticals. We need the dollar to buy cars, to buy machinery, to even buy raw materials into some of our uh, industries. We need the dollar to, to pay school fees abroad, medical travel. Do. So we have decided that we are just going to be a consumer nation. And to consume, we need to get the dollar. And that's the problem. If Nigeria gradually and steadily, like in this one year of this current administration, we're taking fundamental steps like increasing power supply, privatizing the steel sector, uh, privatizing the gas sector, and uh, the railways, and all of that, those kind of areas that will boost the economy, the productive base of the economy. Then, if we are producing everything that we need, if the dollar line, it can go to hell, it doesn't bother us. Mm -hmm. Because we are doing our own food, we are doing our own petrol, we are doing our own uh, pharmaceuticals, and all of that. We're doing our own cars, and all of that. But we're not doing that. So that's why the dollar has become uh, a king in, 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 in the light of our own economy. Now, coming to security, uh, yes, I agree with the reps. You see, uh, just like the analogy I made of uh, a referee with a yellow and a red card, the reason he has those two cards in his pocket is to, to serve as a deterrent to players on the pitch that if you do something wrong, I will show you a yellow, and a yellow again, you are gone. Or if I show you a straight red, you are gone. You know, and you will see 22 players on the field. They will try and contain themselves and behave well. But uh, from time to time, you will see a few of them uh, do wrong things. And you see, the other players see them issue yellow cards. Sometimes they issue their red cards. And that is what makes the game of football to go. If you can imagine, Nyango, that the players know that the referee will never pull out that card. Look, there will be uh, my taxi uh, versus uh, my uh, 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 fury in the uh, in, uh, football pitches. <laughs> 
So this is what President Tinubu needs to do. He has the executive powers to superintend over the security agencies in Nigeria. And for me, I have always said this thing. Say, for instance, there is a kidnapping in a state. First, the commissioner of police in that state should go. The DSS, the head of the DSS in that state should go. The head of civil defense should go because it was their duty to prevent that attack from happening through intelligence gathering. And even as the attack happened, how can you come and carry 300 children and the security agencies will say, we don't know where they took them. You know what 300 means? So, uh, so far, the president is not uh, wielding the stick. Perhaps he's wielding a car, but he's not wielding a stick. And until we, we, are, we, we let public officials in Nigeria face the consequences for their action, we're not going to get the best results from them. It never happens anywhere in the world where public officials know that they can you know, carry on, on any type of uh, ignominy in office and nothing will happen to them, and you expect good governance from them. So President Tinubu so far has not shown any much difference. When something happens, it just comes and says, uh, I condemn it. Like the recent uh, uh, Borno bombings. He said, President Tinubu, no, 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 President Tinubu should not be condemning it. President Tinubu should be sucking the heads of the security in that state for not uh, twatting uh, what had happened. That's the only way we are going to have a good country that we can all enjoy. Okay, on the Punch newspaper, a small headline uh, uh, below there uh, has it that Dangote decries high interest rate seeks government intervention. In other newspapers, he said that it's hard to give uh, to create jobs with the kind of interest rate that we have, and all virtually all the papers carried it that uh, the interest rate is something really worrisome for production in Nigeria. I'd like your comment. He's very correct. But Dangote is a businessman, so he's the one that uh, is, is feeling the, 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 the pinch of uh, these interest rate hikes. We have always said this thing. The central bank uh, in Nigeria, uh, they know. They, so if you read the, the minutes of the monetary policy committees of the central bank, the, the members of the committee are fully aware that Nigeria's inflation is mostly caused by cost push factors. You know, and yet they will increase interest rates. You know, and and, and basic economics uh, 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 portrays that uh, you don't fight a cost push inflation with interest rate hikes. Instead, you deal with the causative factors of why those costs are escalating. You know, the, the the inflation that you fight with interest, you effectively fight with interest rate uh, hikes. Is demand pull inflation, and that's inflation where there's so much money in the economy. Uh, which is chasing uh, fewer goods and there's inflation. And you say in this Nigeria, where is there so much money in the economy? You know, even at the minimum wage of 30,000, which might be a lot of Nigerians are not even any. You know, how much is that? You know, but uh, the inflation is caused by uh, increases in fuel price, uh, increases in the cost of the dollar, you know, uh, increases in all sorts of levies and taxation and all of that that businesses are facing and all that, and the, the, the increases in, uh, in electricity tariff, you know, all that is what is making uh, cost of goods and services to rise. And then, of course, the security. If you talk about uh, food, you know, and then uh, in places where there is no security, uh, the lack of mechanization, you know, you, you are expecting farmers to use their manual labor to cultivate enough food to feed 200 million people. It's a pipe dream. can't happen. You know, we need machines on those farms, and the machines are not that. So these are the factors. But unfortunately, the CBN, after recognizing that these are the causes of inflation in Nigeria, we go ahead and increase the interest rate. And when you increase the interest rate, it then means that the borrowing cost of businesses goes higher. And that means the businesses will transfer the cost of the additional cost of borrowing into the, 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 the prices of goods and services, which in itself is inflationary again. So I think the central bank needs to sit back and say, look, um, is, is this the right way to approach inflation in Nigeria? Because if you look at it, they have been increasing uh, interest rates since, but inflation has refused to come down. Is that not a testament to the fact that interest rate increase is not a solution? If it were a solution, the illness would have been, uh, would have been resolving by now, but it's not. Well, this next headline, when I saw it, I, I kind of laughed. Maybe you'll have, you'll have a, 
a, a different opinion to it. Uh, federal government directs MDAs to patronize made in Nigeria goods. Uh, maybe that is the way to go to make sure that we are a productive nation rather than a consumptive nation, as we have been, we've been saying all this while. Um, but do you think this is a, a step that shows that the government is working towards encouraging productivity within the country? In a statement is one thing, and implementing that statement is another thing. We have heard this thing before. That's, it has happened. I mean, Nigeria is where uh, officials just come up and uh, make statements. Like uh, each inspector general of police, when they take office, they make a statement that roadblocks are banned, no more roadblocks. And they go and sit down and roadblocks continue until their tenure ends. So we have heard this kind of a statement before that uh, government department should, uh, should patronize uh, locally uh, manufactured or produced goods and services. But implementation is a problem. You know, the, this segment was made before National Assembly went and, and bought uh, Toyota cars. Uh, the president himself is uh, not driving Nigerian-made cars. You know, so we, we need to see the president drive innocence. And that will send a strong message down to every minister and head of uh, department or agency that look, the president did it by example, we have no choice than to do this. So it's not about uh, coming on air to make to make uh, to to make press conferences. It's about actually following through what has been said. And uh, I don't think in Nigeria we follow through. But if the government actually follows through on this one, it will be good news. So all fingers crossed. Let us uh, reappraise this thing about three to six months down the road and see whether there's compliance. How will they follow through when all the cars that the government officials need have already been bought and they weren't bought from Nigeria? All the, the, the things that need to be done, even the, the furniture, I'm sure, uh, that are used to furnish the offices of the people who are in government now may not have come from Nigeria. And then after they have done all this, they now tell the MDAs to, what will they buy? What will the MDAs buy that is made in Nigeria that they're encouraging them to buy? And like you said, who is showing the example for people to follow? I, I don't get it. That's why it was so funny to me that you, 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 you chose to do one thing and then give the rest um, the remaining thing to do, like, you know, this is what you're supposed to do, but I'm doing something else. Uh, it's, it's really funny to me. Uh, well, uh, that's the way it is as, uh, for our country, Nigeria. Uh, let's move to another headline. Uh, Tinubu seeks National Assembly's nod as tax regime begins in January. The government uh, wants uh, the National Assembly to, to sign off on that uh, tax regime, uh, which he has said uh, would begin in January. So, first of all, let's look at the tax regime itself and then the fact that it has to wait till January for the implementation. So, uh, one of the things that President Tinubu did in the very early days of his administration was to set up this uh, tax reform committee that is headed by, I think his name is Mr. Oyewole, who used to work in one of the private audit firms. Mm. Uh, and to me, I thought that was a good move, to bring private sector people into government, you know, because uh, one of the problems in Nigeria is that the competent Nigerians who can do it who can move mountains, they are in the private sector, and we have left the, the public uh, sector, especially the political offices, uh, to people who don't have the managerial capacity to run anything. So if you look at the public sector, we have uh, civil servants. Uh, majority of them are qualified, competent, they have been in the system for a long time, they know what to do. But they are being led by public servants, who are the politicians, those who have got political jobs. And those ones, are, are, they, don't have the, they don't have the capacity. Mostly, you see them, they don't have the capacity. They got the job because they, they happen to be members of a political party that won elections. And then they have to be compensated. So when they come into office, they are the ones supervising the civil servants. And you discover that uh, uh, once your supervisor is bad, you will tend to be bad. You know? And uh, the civil servants also, they have perfected the ways of... Uh, of stealing government money, and they quickly uh, give the ideas to these politicians, who of course will be very happy. Because that's the reason they came into office to make money, and that's why nothing is happening in the in the public sector in Nigeria. 
So President Tinubu bringing this private sector hand in was a good move. Now they have made the fundamental they have made fundamental recommendations uh, regarding the tax tax administration in Nigeria. Some of them will require a constitutional change, and I believe that's the reason why President Tinubu is now calling on the National Assembly to back him so that we can do this. And I think that's a good move. You know, uh, everywhere else in the world, it is through tax revenues that governments make money, and they use this money to provide uh, security and welfare to the citizenry. In Nigeria, you discover that those who are paying taxes are the low-level, low-income uh, earners, like market women. This morning, as we speak, uh, there are some people, whether they are legitimate or illegitimate, they are going around the market, you know, taxing those women who are selling in the open sun and all of that. And perhaps those who are working for a salary, the, the employers take pay, uh, whether the pay gets remitted to government coffers and other things. But uh, the big people in Nigeria, those riding private jets up and down, uh, they, they, they are not bringing in their own fair share of taxes. And you know, elsewhere in the world, like here in the UK, uh, there is only like a top 5% that is, is paying about 70% of the taxes. And the government makes sure that they are taking those taxes in. If Nigerian government makes sure that the Dangote, the Hotel Dollars, the Tavidos, uh, the Adelic family and all of these people are paying their fair share of taxation, that alone is going to show up government's revenue by, by hundreds of percentage in Nigeria. So this tax review is an important thing. But like we say, it's not only about the laws, it's also about implementation. Even the tax laws that we have today, they are adequate enough if the government implements them to the letter for us to uh, generate enough revenue for government to do its work. So implementation of policy has always been the pain of Nigeria. And President Tinubu needs to show example by following through on implementation of policies. Yeah, we do hope Nigeria will implement what they say. They put their money where their mouth is, as they say all the time. Uh, that's where we are hoping that we will get to because we have very wonderful laws. A lot of people have said that, but implementation is always the recurrent decimal that everybody will be talking about or has been talking about. But this is where we are going to drop it on uh, Off the Press this morning. I would like to thank you for sharing your time with us this morning. Uh, thank you and have a nice day to all Nigerians. You too. We've been talking to Nick Agule, public affairs analyst who joined us from the United Kingdom. We'll take a short break and when we return, we'll be treating our first hot topic. Stay with us. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.